People with CF have um, scarring of their pancreas, which um, inhibits their ability to make enough insulin. They are insulin insufficient. And insulin is a hormone that we all need to control our blood sugars. Um, and and that's, that's the way most people think about it. But it's also a hormone that we need to keep our weight up and in particular to keep our muscle up. So people who have CF-related diabetes don't make enough insulin. They make some. So in that sense, they're different from, say, childhood diabetes. They're not obese, so they're different from, from adults with type 2 diabetes. It, it's its own form of diabetes. The classic symptoms of diabetes are increased thirst, increased urination, and weight loss. That's for any form of diabetes. The problem with CFRD is that the symptoms can be very subtle, and people with CFRD may not have any of those classic symptoms. Um, uh, you know, if you look very closely over a period of a few years, you might see that they very slowly are losing a little more pulmonary function than you might expect, that their weight is just gradually decreasing a little. Typically, it's diagnosed by screening tests, and the screening test of choice is the oral glucose tolerance test. That's um, a test that is supposed to be done once a year in CF patients who are age 10 and older. They come in on an empty stomach, nothing to eat or drink for eight hours. Um, they drink something that tastes like orange soda and over two hours um, glucose and uh, sometimes insulin levels are measured. Diabetes is a hassle and there's, there's no way to get around that. However, people with diabetes can lead a completely normal lifestyle, eat a normal diet. The diabetes should not keep them from doing anything. If you had asked me five years ago, I would have had to say that people with diabetes don't live as long. People with CF and diabetes don't live as long as people with CF who don't have diabetes, and in particular, that women with diabetes and CF don't live as long. But we now know that with really aggressive uh, screening and treatment, that that is not the case, that, that, that the gap is closed. The big question mark is what about those people who don't quite have diabetes, who have prediabetes? How aggressive do we need to be with them? And, and that's really the focus of, of new research now, and hopefully in a few years we'll have some answers.